Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I wanted to explore a simple idea of traveling at the speed of light. Have you ever wondered what it feels like to travel at the speed of light, or how long it takes for the light to reach certain objects in our solar system? Today you're going to find out. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so for this particular video, we're going to pretend that we are a simple ray of starlight, I guess a photon, or just a sun ray, escaping the sun and traveling out there into the rest of the solar system. We're going to escape from right around here and head to the first planet, Mercury. Now, right now, I'm actually traveling at the speed of light. This is essentially what it would feel like leaving the sun. And if you were to actually look at it when it's a little bit darker you get to kind of see what it would feel like for the light to kind of travel across the surface of the sun. You get to see the sunspots, you get to see all of the stuff happening there, especially if I accelerate time a little bit, so you can actually see how the sun actually moves as well. All right, so let's escape the sun and let's go to the first planet, Mercury. So we're going to point ourselves at Mercury and head there at the speed of light. Now, so this is what it feels like to leave the sun at the speed of light. As you can see, it's not particularly that fast. And we're going to basically go into the direction of Mercury, which is right there. Now, it's still pretty far away from us, and it's going to actually take us quite a while to get there. As a matter of fact, to get to Mercury from the sun, a light would take over three minutes. As a matter of fact, it's about 193 seconds to get to the first planet from the sun. So we're going to actually skip this a little bit, we're going to cheat a little bit, and cut to it, and then pass it at the speed of light. So we're going to actually directly cut to Mercury, skipping those three minutes that it would take us to travel there. And in a few seconds, we're going to zoom past it at the speed of light, right around now. Did you miss it? I did. Let's try this again. Now let's do it from a slightly different perspective. We're going to basically move backwards now at the speed of light and it's going to appear right now, there it is. And now it's gone. So that's essentially how fast the speed of light is, at least when it comes to Mercury because Mercury is a very small object. All right, let's go to the next uh, planet, Venus, and this will of course take us some time as well. So uh, now we're going to travel for about a total of six minutes from the sun or about 360 seconds. And after 360 seconds, we're going to come into view of the second planet called Venus. And there it comes, there it comes, and whoosh. All right, and gun. So that was 360 seconds later, and now comes Earth. This will take us a total of 8.3 minutes from the sun, or approximately 499 seconds. And so 8 point something minutes later, or essentially 499 seconds later, here comes planet Earth and its uh, satellite, the Moon. And there they are, the moon and earth. Now, to get uh, from the moon to earth, so basically this distance right here, this takes light about one second. So basically this takes one second for the light to travel. All right, so that's earth. Let's go to number four, which is Mars. And this is about 12.6 minutes later after we left the sun. And there is Mars. Next is Jupiter. And at 5.2 astronomical units from the sun, this would take sun uh, light or starlight 43.2 minutes to reach. As you can see, um, we're kind of slowly approaching this massive system, and this is at the speed of light, and we, we can already easily tell the four Galilean moons here, so these are Io, Callisto, uh, Ganymede, and Europa, and of course Jupiter right there in the center. So. Even though we're traveling at the speed of light, it doesn't feel as fast anymore because of the size of Jupiter. So here we're going to be very methodically, very slowly approaching it. And uh, this is essentially what it would feel like for you to travel at the speed of light toward Jupiter. And once again, this is because this planet is so massive and so big that even when we pass at the speed of light, it won't really feel like zooming past it like it did before. And you can kind of tell the uh, the shape of Jupiter now with some of its texture and we might even be able to see the um, actual spot of Jupiter but maybe not maybe not on this side though and so here we go this is a little bit more clear now and once again this is at the speed of light 
and we're going to be zooming you through its rings. You can kind of see the rings there. And there we go. And let's just turn around and move away from Jupiter at the speed of light as well. So that was pretty impressive. Next is Saturn. And at close to 10 astronomical units away from the Sun, this would be over an hour travel time. This would be about 79.3 minutes um, or close to about 4,800 seconds of travel time at the speed of light. So basically, the light uh, takes quite a while to get to Saturn. And we're going to try to zoom past it, or actually through its rings, um, imagining that we are our sunlight or a ray of light passing through the rings of Saturn. And you can see all of its moons orbiting around it. I don't really even know which ones we can see, but I'm guessing either this or this is Titan. Uh, and here we go. So there is Saturn at the speed of light. And beautiful. Right through the rings. And now let's move away and watch the beauty unfold. Especially because we get to see the sun through the rings. And there's actually a very beautiful NASA photo that represents this very, very well as well. All right, so let's go to the other ice giants, starting with Uranus. And at this point, we're 19.8 astronomical units away. It takes us over two hours, specifically 160 minutes to travel here. And this is what it feels like to zoom past uh, Uranus. And let's turn around and move away from it as well. And that's definitely a very, very long time to travel to a planet. Next is Neptune, which is about 30 astronomical units uh, away. It will take us 4.1 hours from the sun to get here. This is close to about 15,000 seconds. Very, very long time. And Neptune. Let's uh, move away from it as well. And just for fun, let's actually go to the not-so-planet anymore named Pluto, which is about 39.4 astronomical units away. And this will take us about 5.5 hours of traveling at the speed of light to reach. And we're going to be able to see both Pluto and its uh, satellite Charon right there. And we missed it. Let's maybe try it one more time from the back. And here they are. And that's how tiny they are. And that's how fast we would zoom past them at the speed of light. So that's uh, kind of how slow speed of light really is compared to some of the farther objects. But when you really think about it, as the starlight moves away from our beautiful sun, it obviously keeps traveling into the rest of the galaxy. And that's essentially how it would feel like. I'm currently actually traveling at the speed of light away from the sun, looking at it obviously, but nevertheless, you don't really feel any apparent motion because nothing really moves. None of, none of the stars are moving. Uh, nothing really shows you that this is motion. So if I were to increase the speed just a little bit, let's just say we're going to travel at something like several astronomical units per second. Now you can kind of see the apparent motion. And if I were to travel at something like one light year per second, then you get to actually see stars move across the sky as well. But at the speed of light, at the actual speed of light, it basically feels like nothing. This is once again traveling at the speed of light. You don't really feel anything. Well, before we finish this video, let's maybe jump into the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy known as Sagittarius A star, and we're going to actually jump into it at the speed of light, but we need to approach it much, much closer just for the sake of not making this video several hours long. So I'm going to approach this at a distance of, I don't know, pretty close, I guess. We're actually going to be able to see the, um, the actual black hole. So right now we're about 1.6 astronomical units away. That's still pretty far. That will still take us about eight minutes to reach. I need to be way, way closer. Oh, wow. Okay. I need to be this close, I think. This is already when you can see the um, blue shift and the bending effects of um, things around you. But let's just try from here. Let's see how it would feel to travel at the speed of light into the black hole. So right now I'm traveling at the speed of light into the black hole. You can kind of see it moving slowly toward us, but it's very, very, very slow. Extremely slow. And so something like two minutes later, I'm sort of approaching the event horizon. You can kind of see the event horizon right here, although it's kind of hard to tell because it's everything is so black. But we're inching our way toward the uh, supermassive central black hole in the center of our galaxy. And if I were to turn around and look behind me, I would slowly see the universe close behind me as well. 
So that's what it might feel like for a light to essentially enter the black hole at the speed of light, which as you can see is not as fast as people make it out to be. It is really fast, it is the fastest speed possible, but it is still pretty, pretty slow. And I think right about now I'm going to be entering the event horizon as soon as this curvature kind of straightens out. And there we go. So now we have entered the supermassive black hole at the speed of light. And we're going to move away from uh, the rest of the universe, enter the black hole and disappear completely. So that's essentially what it feels like to travel at the speed of light. And anyway, hopefully you learned something from this video and you enjoyed watching it as well. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with people who might enjoy learning things through video games. And don't forget to come back tomorrow to learn something completely different and possibly just watch me play a video game. Educationally. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Give me later. Space out. Bye-bye. And goodbye, universe. Goodbye. At the speed of light.